Hello and welcome back to Leander98 channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to make a 3D printable car in Blender. We're going to be using a 2019 Toyota GR86 as our template to make throughout the tutorial. So, without further ado, I present to you the 2024 modeling tutorial for 3D printing. Alright, so to get started, we're going to have to go over some basic simple things. First off, let's take a look at our menus here. First thing we're going to take a look at is units. We're going to want metric here, and we're going to keep the scale at 1. So, Blender uses meters as its metric system here. Now, yes, you can make it millimeters, but that doesn't actually make it millimeters. So... If I were to take this right now, it says that it is 13.2 meters wide by 10 by 1.62. If I were to export that as an STL, it's not going to be 13 meters. It's going to be 13.2 millimeters. So I don't know why the scale is off, but we're not going to question that right now because it works. I know this is the fact because if I were to go into something like Fusion 360 and then import a file in it comes in in meters so may as well leave it it works right okay so with that in mind we got our units set now let's go down to well actually no we're not even gonna look at this mesh first we're gonna take a look at our images and well you see that in my tutorial right now it is pink so in your case, because we are assuming that you are starting off with a completely blank slate, so apologies for not deleting the starter cube in this, you're going to go to Add. Actually, first, get your view that you want. I'm in Side View here, and you're going to go to Add, Image, and Reference. It'll ask you then pick an image. Then for this, we're going to go to Toyota. And we are going to do, we're not going to go to Toyota, we're going to go to Cars to Do. <laughs> and we're going to find our GR86. Now you see that it comes in really tiny. Which, depending on the scale that you want, that's fine. However, I like to scale model big for the sole fact that when I'm exporting it, it's roughly the same size, so make it big, well, at least po in the positive direction. However, I'm just going to use my already being used images. Boop. Now we see that it's not in its location. And then you can use the G command and move it into place. What do you mean you don't have a blueprint? Well, I guess I ought to tell you how to find one. Okay, so there's two different ways that you can go about this. You can go to Google or Microsoft Bing, type in the car you want, and then have the word blueprint right after it. There's a huge chance that what you're going to find is going to be littered with uh, watermark stuff on it, and that is perfectly fine because you can still see what you need. Now, this is the first way of doing it, and that requires the Google search to actually find what you're looking for. However, there is a nicer way. You can come here, and we're going to do it the illegal way. We're using Microsoft Edge, so we're going to right click and go to inspect. Then, when this all pops up, we're going to click to body. I should mention that we're on theblueprints.com. This site usually forces you to pay for blueprints, but you can get the watermarked version pretty easily. So, by going to inspect, you can then find the larger image here. Now, yes, over the years they've blurred these images quite a bit. You used to get a really nice one here, but it's been blurred down because they obviously know that you can cheat the system. As well as that Google We'll feed you the pictures right there. Now, something else you might want to do is also just Google image the car itself. Find yourself some reference photos. Something like this because, as you may know, 
blueprints don't tell you the entire story of a car. Like as we can see here on the side skirt, how deep does that actually sink in? I don't know. So we look at the picture. Not only does that sink in, but that also sink the very bottom sinks in quite a lot. And I probably wouldn't have gotten that on the first go without looking. So that's important to end up looking. So then after you have your picture saved, you're gonna come back over, load that into Blender, and then get your view set up. I usually like to, for the side view, get my numbers in the center there. Then you're going to do the same, add image, find your picture that you want, and align that. Apologies if I'm skimming over some things here. I'm assuming that you've done Blender once before. And if not, there's always a donut tutorial to follow. Not to mention the last tutorial that I made on this subject probably goes through this a little more detailed. But I'm doing this tutorial because there's a lot I've learned since doing that first tutorial. Actually, second, third tutorial? I've done a few of these. They're mediocre at best, but they teach you how to 3D print a car in the end. So that's good enough. Whoop. I forgot that it's on the local. Oh, that's another thing. If by chance you're getting mixed up as to why your Y is going sideways when it's clearly going that way, it's because you're on local. I like changing that to global just because I know Y goes in this direction, X goes in that direction, and Z goes in this direction. So it just makes it nice. Another thing I like to also do when it comes to these photos is set these to only access because it is sometimes annoying to be able to see the picture on all these sides. Unless you're going for the clout image, but we don't want to do that right now. We also only want this on the front because if by chance I need to look at the bottom of the car, I don't want to see the top. As well, if I'm looking at the front, I don't want to see the back and vice versa. And we're going to keep the opacity at 1. We don't really need to make it invisible as pretty much once we start getting a lot of mesh going on here, if anything, you'd wish it would be more opaque. Wait, is that the word I'm looking for? Probably. But either way, you end up seeing the mesh in the back and it throws you off. Okay, next thing we want to do is we want to get our mesh. So we're going to kind of add... Actually, first what you're going to do, come to view, and go to your 3D cursor location. Pretty much anything you bring in is going to be placed to that 3D cursor. So, you're going to come in, add your mesh. Now, you don't want to move it from this location. It's best when it's kept at zero, just so then the mirror command works its best. And so then you'll hit tab, click A to select everything and then move it into the location you want. But because I already have one, boop. Okay, then once you want to come down, go to modifiers. The only one that we're going to activate right now is the mirror command. And pretty much we're gonna leave it st stock, but we're gonna put clipping on. And this is so then, when something's in the center, it can't be pulled from the center. So then when something is solidified in the end, we don't get a nasty crease going down the side. Or by chance, we happen to lose it. All right, so we'll end up bringing our bit here. Boop. And pretty much, we're just going to draw the very tip of the roof. We are not going to be doing the shark fin just yet. That'll be saved for later. Almost the end. Now, we're going to go to our other views. And pretty much, we're going to put it into place. So I see that I have a little bit of a hangout there from the start because my mesh wasn't very straight. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit S for scale, X for the direction, and 0 to make it perfectly flat. We're also going to take a look at our image here, and we can see that there is a slight dip in the roof. So we're going to find where that dip was or at least the dip stops, so it looks like roughly here. Alright, we'll go to our other view, make sure that we are 
in good positioning here. What I did there was I scaled and then hit Z and then moved it up a little so I only scaled in the Z direction. Then we'll go to the roof. Hey, look at that. It actually marks out where the crease is so I don't have to guess. So that means that's probably fine. That might have got disrupted a little, but that's okay. And then here's something that I learned. We're going to use the double G command. So by double clicking G, the vertice will move in that direction only. Now if you're a Blender veteran, this is probably obvious information. However, I had no idea about this the last time I made a tutorial, so as you can probably guess, my mesh was disgusting. So that is one benefit of doing this year's tutorial is that we'll actually have a semi-decent looking mesh. Which is good. We'll bring that back this way a little. And remember, we're going to be using subdivision later on, so we don't need this thing to be looking the prettiest in the world. I think what we're going to do is we're going to add... No. We're going to come down here. I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're just going to have that as our basic mesh right now. Here's an important thing, saving as. We're going to save it as so then we don't crash because Blender can crash unexpectedly depending on the version you got. 21, GR86, all Z. So now that we're saved. Okay, so there's a few other things that we need to set up before we end up moving on to physical modeling. And that's setting up textures. Now, yes, that's something that you could do at any point. However, doing it early on is a good thing, especially if you're like me and you want to have a template set up. Now, if you're solely modeling cards, just the 3D print, you don't need textures. But if you're like me to where you've done it so long, you end up finding other mediums that you like. Maybe setting up textures so it looks pretty in the end isn't a bad idea. So, I have at least the textures that I need. Some are just straight blender textures, and some are physical pictures. So as we wait for the shaders to final load up here, I just have, well, a simple metallic car paint right there. I have a secondary color in case, windows that are slightly transparent, a little plastic color with texture on it, you know what? Plastic with texture. I've got chrome. Got a grill mesh here, but this is really only gonna be necessary when it comes to a grill and when it comes to image textures which might be best to look up an actual texture-based tutorial for this, you do need to unwrap it and then go into the UV editor to make it look how you want. Then we also got headlight lens, which is pretty much a lighter version of the windows. Got a headlight glow, which uses, well, it makes these all slider shaders, which is kind of annoying for showing, because that means going to the shading tab, and that's a whole nother day. Headlight backing. So that's pretty much just a variety of pictures of headlights. This is good for when you're trying to make a renderable version, and you don't want to have too much time into it. A clear red. A light uh, glowing red. A backing red. Same with the turn signals. And that's it. Alright, so that's textures. How about something important that you probably don't know about? Unless you're a Blender veteran. It's this, the Auto Smooth. Now, pretty much, you're not going to notice anything right now. This will come in handy when we end up doing... Well, when the car gets a little more complete... And we deal with smooth shade, smooth faces, and sharp edges. 
which is definitely something new that we'll have learned for this year's tutorial. Let's see. I think that's everything. Probably isn't, but if it is, great. We can move on. I mean, if we think about something, we come back to it later. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next part. See ya.